Here it is, the week leading up to Valentine's Day, and as we do every year, this week is designated Heart Week, a time to focus on matters of the heart. And we learned last week that heart disease is the number one killer of both men and women. Your heart health is nothing to take lightly, and our next guest will tell you firsthand. Mike Hall is a five-time world weightlifting drug-free champion, one of the strongest men alive. But even the strongest man can fall victim to a massive heart attack, and that's exactly what happened to Mike. He says it was a weight he just couldn't lift. But it was no ordinary heart attack. Mike suffered what's commonly known as the widowmaker. You might consider it the mother of all heart attacks. It results in the complete blockage of the left main coronary artery. Now, according to Peninsula Regional Medical Center, this type of heart attack is known for its high mortality rate. In fact, the American Heart Association says the survival rate is only 5%. Fortunately, Mike was part of that 5%, and we are happy to have him back with us in the Delmarva Life studio today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jimmy Lisa. Okay, so you had the Widowmaker. Yes. What was, what was that like for you? Well, it was a devastating time, you know, um, tightness of the chest, uh, shortness of the breath, uh, but um, thank God we, we made it through. This was tough. Did you know what was going on when it happened? Well, yeah, when I first started, uh, I was home and um, I had like a little um, indigestion, heart indigestion around by one o'clock in the morning, so I got up and uh, I tried to relieve it by, you know, belching, uh, but this one, this one or the, um, it just didn't go away. Mm -hmm. And finally, I got this deaf feeling, this little feeling that, uh, that guess what, uh, go get your clothes on. I don't like hospitals. Mm -hmm. And I went home, I went, I went on the side of the bed and I tied my shoe and I seen something I've never seen before. My hands started sweating. And that was a signal for me, you know what, uh, know your body, I've never seen this before. And uh, we, we started to go to the hospital. Did you, uh, did you think it was your heart? Did you know it was your no, heart? No, I didn't. I was thinking maybe it was more of just uh, uh, indigestion, yeah. you know. And never thought of heart attack. And even because even when I went to the truck, uh, I was slightly breathing. But I was still thinking. Um, but I thought of all the things I used to tell <laughs> young people with that, you know, I was trying to cough, making sure the heart was working. And, uh, and I just didn't really think it was a heart attack. I just thought it was some bad indigestion. Um, but um, thank, thanks for the timing that, because uh, you know everything when it comes to heart attack is timing. Yes. Right. That we got there just in time. And when I got on a gurney, so when I went into a massive heart attack. Yeah, you almost died. Yes, yeah, so well I did three times. Uh, they uh, had to bring me back three times. And each time they brought me back, I thanked them. And oh um, guess what? Then I realized, I, I would tell them, I said, oh, guess what, I'm going back out. They would say, no, no, no. And I went back out again. Oh. And but, uh, yeah, yeah. And then uh, after the second time, you know, that's where faith comes. I say, God is, you know, I want to see my girls again, you know. Yeah. And uh, guess what? After the third time, uh, they brought me back, and that was it. So that was a blessing. And you do have three beautiful daughters. Yes, I have three beautiful daughters, a wife, and um, and they mean a lot to me. Yeah. They're the ones who support me. All right. So how has this changed you since it happened? Well, it's made me uh, realize that. Um, you know, when, you, when you're always doing a lot for people, you know, I've always speak and I've done so much in my life and travel that I guess you, sometimes you think of, you do so much for others and you forget yourself. Right. You know, you're telling everybody else. And uh, of course, being the strongest man in the world, lifting all the weights there is, all those years, uh, I think I sort of lost focus, mm -hmm. and which can happen. And uh, because uh, really when I think about it and I look at it, my doctors told me the signs. Uh, they, uh, you know, they told me my cholesterol was a little low. My LDLs right. was high. Excuse me, I'm sorry. But I thought I could do it with, you know, nutrition. And um, but then I didn't realize that in my family, genetic-wise, uh, heart attacks were prevalent. Mm -hmm. And um, so, um, and that's what happened. But I also, I'm, um, thank God that, um, um, I guess, lifting the weights all those years as a two-edged sword because you know you have a lot of trauma on the, the body, the frame, the heart. But at the same token, the doctor mentioned that, um, uh, that the workouts, my heart was able to be able to withstand that massive, three massive heart attacks. He said you had a strong heart. And he said the workouts will help my, uh, my arteries to collaborate with the other ones, even though one with 100% blockage. So you know, that's a good tap for, uh, 
for that, you know, staying in shape, uh, exercises. You know, it's just, it's just, just a powerful drug. And yeah. after the heart attack, obviously, you weren't able to immediately go, and go back to, to working out. But you mm. have gotten back into exercise. Oh, definitely, definitely. How's it I, different? Yeah, uh, yes, I went to rehab, um, cardiac rehab. And uh, uh, my wife and my girls had to hide all the dumbbells and <laughs> <you know, laughs> hide the dog because I would lift him because it was, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah, remember all these years. I've been doing this for 40, 50 years. And, uh, it was hard to leave it alone, and uh, but yes, I've been back. Um, I have uh, uh, more cardio, um, uh, you know, really just um, you know more cardio, cardiovascular strength training, trying to maintain my strength, you know. Right. Um, so, but yes, it's been really good. And of course, um, you know, change of my uh, eating habits, uh, you know, being more uh, strict on that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, from a man who has been there. What would you say to someone who has had a heart attack? Mm -hmm. What would you tell them? Stay positive. Uh, give that support. Um, don't be afraid after you, you, know, you get the okay from your doctor to start working out. Because you don't want to lose what you have. Uh, you know, um, you don't want to, uh, keep yourself informed. Make sure you get those checkups. Uh, mm -hmm. Make sure if you need to take medications to do it. And um, don't, you know, just listen to what your body is telling you because uh, that was very important to be able to recognize that. Now, it's easy to say, hey, I'm going to start working out, but it's harder to do sometimes. What do you say to someone who maybe just can't take that first step to get off the couch and work out? Well, for, um, I would tell them, baseball, look at the plan and the goal and find something that motivates you more than yourself. For me, it's my girls. Uh, it's my family. Um, it's for all the young people that I've talked to all my life. Um, um, and God gave me a gift. And guess what? I want to utilize that gift. So when my time comes, I want to be all used up. So I would tell them to basically to keep those goals, uh, find something that motivates you, um, make small changes. Not big changes, small changes. It's not about losing weight. It's about maintaining. Mm -hmm. It's about those healthy biometric numbers, good numbers. That's important. The world's strongest drug-free man. My call. Thank, Thank you. And you are looking Thank great, you. by the Thank way. You Likewise, you guys are too. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and to read more about the Widowmaker heart attack or to read more about Mike, go to our website, WBOC.com, click on our picture at the top of the page.